I, I welcome you to Uganda. I think the to get a good picture, I need to inform you that Uganda had become a failed state. It had become a failed state. It had collapsed. When we analyzed the reasons for all this uh, chaos, we came up with two missions that would be assisted by four principles. Now, the two missions were, mission number one is how do you build prosperity in an African country? How do you build prosperity? It's not only for Uganda, it's even for other countries, for the whole of Africa. Then secondly, how do you build strategic security? Strategic security, security which covers all situations. Now, because what some of our other people were doing, you could see clearly, they will, for instance, talk about tribes. Siasa za ubaguzi wadini na makabira. Sectarian, sectarian politics. Uh -huh. So, and, and you find people really pushing, pushing uh, sectarian politics. Then you ask yourself, but how would this, would this help us to solve the problem of prosperity? And how about security, strategic security? Would this, this type of politics, where you base yourself on, on tribes and religious groups, and will it help us to, to, to build a strategic security? So that's why we said no. We think you people, you are lost. Those who are pushing those, uh, that line. So therefore, we, for us, we said, okay, if Africa, if, if Uganda is to prosper in a modern way, what will it need? And what to do? The families, because you see, when you talk of politics, you don't, you, you start with the families. Families in the home seeing you are inch. Families. So, really, the, when we talk of prosperity, we are talking of prosperity for the family, for the individual. Now, to be prosperous in a modern way, you must produce a good or a service and you said it. Aha. Uh -huh. So, if that is the case, then that means you need two people. You need a producer of a good or a service and a consumer. And a consumer. The one who buys. Because if I produce something, but nobody buys it, or few people buy it, then I cannot continue. I cannot continue. Uh -huh. Then we said, OK, if that is the case, for modern, modern life, you need a producer of a good or a service and a consumer. But you need infrastructure to 
to link the two. Uh -huh. Because if I produce a good, a good, but I can't deliver it to the market, I cannot deliver it to the consumer, then how will I be, how will I, how will I manage? So, I am prosperous, not because of my Kabira, not because of my religion, but because of Uganda, the market of Uganda, the market of Kampara. What were Kampara and you and Anua, be the, be, be the Z Z Hapa, and we get money and we are able to solve our problem. So when we did this, we said, oh, you people who are talking about tribes and religion, you are misleading us. You are prophets of, of, of doom and we don't accept your position. So therefore, we said in order to achieve our mission, our mission of prosperity, we said first principle must be patriotism. Patriotism. Principle number one is patriotism. In Swahili, we say uzarendo. I think we say uzarendo. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say social economic transformation through participating in the four sectors of the economy where you can make money. One of them is commercial agriculture, but with a sabu, with a, with a calculation. Uh, without a calculation, you may, you may be in the money economy, but never get out of poverty. Then, second sector is the one we are talking about, in industries. Industries. Big or small. Uh, but as you know, industries, once they produce products, they need a market. Uh -huh. they, 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 they need a market within Uganda, they need a market in Africa, in the region, and they need a market internationally. But even internationally, for us to negotiate with the big market, we need our own big market. Since you want to Cuba, in a quarter easy to bargain with the, 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 the big people, say, oh, if you don't allow me in your market, I will also not allow you in mine. But Uganda, Uganda cannot dictate to China, cannot say, you, 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 you China, if you don't do this, I will not allow you to do this. That's why we need a, our own big market to be able to bargain uh, with others. So the second sector is industry. But industry, as I've told you, even with, the, even with agriculture, you need the market internal, the market regional, the market international. The market within, within, within Uganda, it is through political unity of our people so that we concentrate on uniting Uganda, not tribes and religion. Within the region, it is integration. Integration. We shall strengthen the market through East African integration. Uh, economic and, and where possible, even political. Uh, Your Excellency, we are talking of industrialization or trying to transform our communities, our societies and our countries uh, to become industrialized. But uh, the Western countries, I don't think they are, they are willing to allow us to be industrialized because they, for them, they want us to remain their market. Hmm and uh, they want to maintain us uh, the way we are, as poor as we are. But for us, as we rely on the Western technologies or those other developed countries, I don't think we can develop. So, Your Excellency, how far have we gone in terms of transforming our education system? 
the education system that we inherited from our colonial masters, which might have been designed to keep us down. Because if you look at our graduates, who, all of them, almost the majority, are training to become managers. Managing what? Why don't we invest as much as possible in producing technicians or engineers who can at least come up with the technology whereby we can produce our own products and probably reach to the point of competing with, 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 with those developed countries. He was asking a good question. Can we rely on the technology and the investments of others to industrialize our countries? Or should we have our own indigenous uh, technology or technology indigenized by ourselves? I think it, here we are, we are using a combination. For some years now, we have been emphasizing the teaching of science. Like, for instance, when it comes to government sponsorships in university, many years ago, we ordered that 70% of the government's scholarships should be for science. It's only 30% of government sponsorship that goes for these non-science subjects. Uh, and some of the universities will specifically discourage uh, these social science courses, like the University of, of, of Mbarara here, the University of, of, of West Nile, the University of Gulu. We always emphasize, especially the new ones, we, we encourage them to, because we, fi we find the universities are spending a lot of money on social science courses, uh, conflict resolution, I don't know what, uh, we, we, we say no. Let's, so we are combining, we are combining uh, uh, the, the, that one of uh, of uh, 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 emphasizing our own uh, teaching of science in the universities. But Ngarambe is right because we need. It's not just theoretical science. It must be science which, which is also practical. Uh, and, and that's where we have these uh, other technical colleges. We have uh, many of them, technical colleges, like for instance on the petroleum, we started the, the technical college of uh, Chigumba, which uh, deals with, with the petroleum uh, t technology. So we are, we are moving. We need to move more, but we are conscious. We are conscious of, of, of that gap. But at the same time, you can also, if you are, uh, have a good policy, you can attract technology from uh, other people, especially China and so on, uh, and India. They can also make a contribution. But you have absolutely right. You should not depend on only the outsiders. You should develop your own capacity. But you gave us a very, very special treatment that we honestly uh, need to thank you most sincerely, sir.